Hi, welcome back to Live and Breathe Horses at Central Cross Street La Luce and our Words of Wisdom series with classical principles of the art of training horses and Master Nuno Oliveira. So today we are doing the chapter on cadence and extensions. And like last week, actually, you know, it's only, it's not even quite two pages. So I'm again tempted just to give it all rather than try to summarise anything. So, what is cadence? Cadence is rhythm and energy combined, with more suspended movements and muscle tone acquired through the previous suckling exercises. This results in the horse remaining more round, more receptive and more able to pass quickly from one movement to the next and one exercise to the next and the horse begins to collect himself. A complete study of the rhythm and natural movement of each horse when he is calm and at liberty will reveal the precise notion of the appropriate rhythm to work in all the preceding exercises in order to arrive at the appropriate cadence for each horse. Certain horses move slower than others, and in order to have a horse truly in a good collection, one must work him in his own cadence. So this is really a bit of gold, huh? just to observe the horse at liberty and feel his movement and natural rhythm and then to work him in that. Sounds so obvious, but how often is that overlooked? So know what is the cadence of the collected walk? What is the cadence of the collected trot? and the cadence of the longer trot, this trot inappropriately called today the working trot. It's precisely in the maintenance of the appropriate cadence in each movement that one maintains the lightness, the weight on the haunches and one achieves collection. It's when the horse remains very round with a, well flex, with, a, with a flexible back and comes up in front without hollowing the back that one can begin the true medium and extended trots. If one is working a horse that can naturally lengthen his stride while still maintain his balance, then we must allow him to use that lengthening trot as a relaxing exercise. The horse which puts weight on his shoulders naturally and who hurries when we ask him to lengthen should not be asked the extended trot. From the development of the action of the hind legs from the exercises that have gone before as in the shoulder in, half pass, the halt and the variations of the half pass, the horse will do a better extended trot and piaf. You see it's all about the balance isn't it? getting that balance and if we just push him forward to try and get extended trot when he's not ready we just push him on the forehand and do much more harm than good. So the horse will perform both the extended trot and the piaf through the same physical capabilities. In both cases it's the activity of the hindquarters that are crucial to the success of the exercise. In the extended trot the degree of impulsion enables the horse to take advantage of a yielding rein to cover the ground in a balanced, relaxed trot. Balanced extended trot, sorry. In the Piaf, the horse is again using the energy and activity of the hindquarters to trot on the spot. Again, in a state of equilibrium and balance. In both cases, the impulsion is the result of the exercises we have already outlined, which brings weight onto the hind legs. These exercises have increased the ability of the horse to flex well his joints, especially the fetlocks, the back of which nearly touch the floor in these movements. The only true extension of the trot is the one in which, which results in which is the result, sorry, of collection with the horse light and on his hindquarters. The lengthening of the trot with showy movements of the shoulders in which the back of the horse remains hollow and the hind legs are left behind and sometimes spread apart does not figure in the domain of equestrian art. For this lengthening, it's very important point to know to produce an increase in impulsion in collected trot if the horse needs it through the combined action of the hands and legs. Then to be able to take advantage of this increase in impulsion at the moment of the departure into extension. 
When taking the diagonal, you must watch that the weight does not come onto the inside shoulder. This is the reason that one must remember that the correct riding of each corner is a small moment of shoulder in. You know, shoulder in, set them up, prepare, boom, and off we go. <laughs> in the, if the lengthening is obtained after having acquired collection and cadence, the horse has a supple back and the rider can sit without moving in the saddle, as one often sees in prematurely asked ass lengthenings. It's especially important not to ask more than each horse is naturally capable of giving as his maximum extension. It's always necessary during a lengthening to think of returning to the collected trot with a lowering of the hindquarters and in lightness and not to throw the horse onto the shoulder with one or two rigid steps. If the horse hurries a little on the diagonal, one can correct him either by returning to the exercises in suppleness at a collected trot, like shoulder in on the circle, or by stopping, reining back for a number of steps on the same diagonal in order to have him balanced before departing in a lengthened trot again. In order to obtain an extension with horses which do not have much lengthening of stride, one can, by increasing the impulsion, improve the resulting lengthening of stride. Here is a way of proceeding. Take the centre line and collect a trot, half pass to the long side, arriving at the long side, reaffirm half pass into renvers, continue renvers along the short side and take a very straight diagonal and allow the horse to lengthen his stride. So that's, you know, getting the energy. It's like building up the energy that then the horse is glad to get out of that more difficult movement of the renvers. And then when you just let go and he can flow forward, hopefully, and be relaxed and lengthen his stride more with the power coming through from behind. So before the following chapter, the canter, I wish to give some advice to the riders. Do not work for a long time at a walk or a long time at the trot. Vary it. Of course, at the beginning, the longer you work at the walk, the more the horse calmly learns the exercises and the more time the horse has to reflect. Later, alternating the trot with the return to the walk in order to increase the suppleness of the horse is very good. So I love this, you know, sometimes you see people think, okay, we're doing the walk and now I'm doing the trot and now I'm doing the canter. So keep varying, you know, going from one to the other. And then we get extra chance to practice our transitions in between. So thank you very much for joining me today. I look forward to see you next time for the canter chapter and keep tuning into the light. <laughs>